everyone, this is my video on housing, dining, and transportation. So I'll be covering housing on and off campus in the residence halls and, and the um, campus apartments as well. Um, I'll also talk about like living with different people and like just rooming together and how that will work and just suggestions on that. Um, the dining plans and different locations of dining. Uh, I'll also talk about like parking permits and like just commuter life in general because I don't drive and don't um, have a car either so I don't have um, much experience in, or like stuff to say about it and I'll briefly touch on summer housing um, and please read the FAQs about housing and transportation. So things to consider for housing. Um, please definitely check out the virtual tours which the link is provided in there. Um, they're generally accurate, but they don't provide um, a tour for IV or OBIN. And I do believe that most of the virtual tours, if not all, try to show like the better side of the residence hall. So like for Lowlyan, they'll show like East Low compared to West Low because East Low is newer and looks better. And then um, I don't think they have Dundee yet. But uh, for Glenmore too, I believe they show new Glenmore for at least the um, four bed apartment. So things to consider, how close do you wanna live on campus? Do you wanna live on campus or off campus? Can you commute from home? So like, do you live near UCR or do you live farther than that? Uh, do you have a car, a bike, a scooter or a skateboard? And also think about traffic too and like traffic between like how long your commute is. Um, is there also like a bus stop or a bus route that's nearby if you were interested in like just walking or taking a bus? Um, also like think about the weather too, like especially if you live farther and like you don't have a car and you were, you were probably like walking, biking or like um, using the skateboard and like it might, it can, it's often hot and it can rain at times. So be prepared for all of that. Um, also consider who you want to live with and like how many people you want to live with because that also plays into the price as well um, and how independent do you want to feel do you want if you live on campus I feel like you are being independent but not as much compared to being off campus because there's less resources around you and as for roommates of course communication is key to any relationship especially if you live with that person. So make sure to set rules and boundaries about like how loud these people are, how loud you are, and like um, how often you want to clean or like what you should clean, like just chores in general, um, how much you want to spend or like are you going to like share a budget or like just pay for your own things, um, how often you want guests to come over or like having guests stay overnight um, and especially like if you don't have a car and like one of them has a car like how are you going to like work out car rides and stuff like that. Um, if you live on campus you're most likely going to set a contract with your roommates but I would say like even if you live off campus it might be good to have some sort of like contract in place. As for like rooming like choosing your roommates some people say live with your friends or like your best friends and some people live, say live with strangers. It really depends on you and like how comfortable you are around these people. Um, I feel like living with someone who's like different from you and especially in a different major can help you like, especially if you're like talk about it often, um, you'll get to know more about that person and like how they see the world and how they experience it but also like within that major too so like if you hear like from someone who like it actually has questions about that major then like you have some connection to your roommate and then maybe you can like set networking up again everyone's roommate experience is subjective so decide at your own risk on like who you want to live with and how many people you want to live with as for costs, um, obviously the more people you live with or share a room with, it will be um, cheaper. The supply is on and off campus. And as for the residence halls, no matter where you live, they're all the same price. Just depends on like um, how many people you're sharing your room with. 
And I would highly suggest you choose the smallest dining plan because you're most likely not going to use all of your meal swipes unless you only eat at the dining hall and you eat there like often. As for campus apartment costs, it depends on like which campus apartment and of course the apartment style and the room style. Um, from what I've noticed, the closer the apartment to campus, the cheaper it is actually, but that doesn't apply to off-campus. Off-campus is um, the cheap, the closer, the more expensive. Um, for the campus apartments, most of them don't include a dining plan, but Glenmore does because it's like right by the residence halls and plus like there's the market at Glenmore, so there's food like quite close by. But also keep in mind Glenmore is the most expensive because it also um, includes a dining plan. So where can you live? I decided to make a nice chart for you all so it will show you like the different residence halls and campus apartments along with like what kind of student can live there. So like whether you're a first year or like a continuing student or a transfer student or like grad student or a student with family like made this all here. Um, I noticed, um, I found out this year that apparently um, all the residence halls have changed to now include all undergraduate students. So like any undergrads can live there, um, except for like Dundee. Dundee can also include um, graduate students for living there. If you want to know how big each room or apartment is and you want to see like the layout and like how it looks like in general, I would say like go to each individual website, which I've linked. Ooh, so for the residence halls, I don't know much about Dundee, fortunately, because it's new. Um, I can tell you a lot about Pentland because I've lived there and I've seen, I've gone to like different AI and Lothian rooms. So I can tell you a bit, um, but basically AI, Lillian, and Dundee are like your traditional um, res halls with, you're living with um, maybe around 50 people, not sure about Dundee, but um, you'll be living with your resident advisor, your RA as well. Um, and you'll be sharing the restrooms with all of these people. So the amount of cleanliness, not much. Um, but I would say that East Low, East Lillian is cleaner because it is newer. Um, and AI and Lothian do have dining halls within it, so like AI and Lothian, um, it's all basically one building versus like Dundee, it's two buildings of residences, and then like there's a separate building called Glasgow for um, dining, so you kind of like, you have to walk out of your um, residence in order to get food, and it's the same with Pedlin, like there's, it's pretty much um, smaller versions of residence halls. So like there's only like eight to 10 people since it's like a suite style and um, each building is is like connected in pairs. So like A and B, C and D and so on. Um, you only have to share the shower and the toilet with um, eight to 10 people really. So it just depends on like how many rooms there are depending on whether you're living with your, um, you're in the same hall as your RA or not and um, oh, the showers and the toilets, they're like in separate rooms. So like the shower is in one room and then there's like a bench in there. And then um, for the toilets, it's a toilet and then a sink in there. So they're like completely separated. So like you can go on whenever you need, um, which is, I would say it's quite convenient because like if you prefer more privacy, then it works out for you. But if you don't care, then it doesn't matter. Um, as from oldest to newest, so AI is the oldest, the most traditional, and then Westlow, Pentland, and then Eastlow. I heard Eastlow was rebuilt or something because like a fire burnt it down. Not really sure on the details of that. Don't know if it's true, but it's newer. And then of course there's Dundee, which is the newest since um, it was basically done, I believe, last quarter. Um, in winter, I think, and it will be open for the fall. Uh, people do say that Pentland's more like quiet and reserved because like there's less people living there, but it really depends on what kind of person you are and what kind of what kind of people you're living with. So 
if they're like super social and, and you're super social, then it works out. You have like a friendly environment. But if no one really talks and you don't really talk either, like if there's no like exchange of communication whatsoever, then it will be quiet. So I would suggest like, especially if you're like a quiet person like I am, try talking to your homemates, um, especially like within the, within the first week, I, um, I would highly suggest you talk to these people, get to know like who's living with you so that um, you can like find out like maybe one of them is in the same major as you or like at least in the same college, maybe you can like take classes together, or, like form study groups, things like that. And especially like if you have, I mean, granted, if when we go back in person, um, if you have classes late at night, you'd want to walk with someone. So I would say um, definitely get to know the people that you're living with. Oh, and also um, Pentland is only like one gender, like as in the typical gender, as in like female or male. So you're only living with females or you're only living with males. Uh, so what did I put here? Okay. Um, this is kind of just general information about everything, um, kind of just general comparisons. As I live in Pentland, I am more experienced with it and know more about it. Pentland, like if you like cooking and baking, it's Pentland's your place because there's a community um, kitchen and stove and oven. I'm not sure if Dundee, Dundee will have it, but I don't think they will. Um, all rest halls in general come with like a micro fridge mattress, bed frame, dresser, uh, closet, desk, desk shelf, desk lamp, chair, towel rack, and recycle bin. Obviously, you need to bring your own bedding set because why would you want to use someone else's? Not like they provide it either, but yeah, bring your own bedding. Um, I would say like buy ones from an actual store because I heard that the ones from the school website that they send in the mail and I believe send in your email as well, that is, um, I think, smaller, like smaller, um, blankets and stuff. So I would say just buy your own and buy a bigger one in case so that there's just more blanket to use. Um, everything is carpet. I'm not too sure about Dundee, but just be careful because I know like in my experience with um, Penland living with carpet floors, people did make messes. So yeah, just be careful. Um, oh, there, I believe there's also like a community vacuum in Pentland. I want to say in the residence halls in general, but they took it out of Glenmore. I don't know why. Um, I would say bring what you need only in the beginning. And then like once you figure out like how much space you have later on, you can like um, buy more things if you need it or like bring more things, like whatever you want. Um, in Pentland, I would say like this goes for any like residence hall, but just in case I'd say like just bring a roll of toilet paper and soap um, just to have there with you like in case of like any emergency whatsoever um definitely bring your own like bathroom and shower necessities especially shower shoes because you're sharing the shower with so many people and that's nasty you don't want to get toe fungi or whatever um the laundry rooms in ai and lothian are bigger because it's like definitely more of a community one versus like Pentland, there's only two for like the whole building. Um, and you do have to like, in, especially in Pentland, you do have to wash your laundry at like odd times or like whenever people like usually aren't there so that you can do your laundry. I, for me, it worked best in like weekend, more, weekend early mornings because most people in the residence halls decide to go home on the weekend. So like no one's really here. And especially in the early morning, like no one's really awake. Um, only Pentland has full body mirrors for the closet doors. The, um, I believe AI and Lillian, there's like a small mirror next to your closet, and but it only shows like your waist up depending on how tall you are and like depending on like how high you're standing and stuff. Um, and yeah, the closets aren't very big, so really just bring seasonal clothes and then like some other like clothes that you need to prepare for other seasons. But like especially with when um with winter and spring break they kick you out of the residence hall so um unless you like extend your stay and you have to pay for it but otherwise they basically kick you out for the break and so like when you go back home um you can 
get your other clothes. And keep in mind, um, Lothian has, only Lothian has four floors versus AI and Pentland have three. Um, I forgot to include this, but Dundee has seven, yeah, seven floors. So I just made like a detailed enough um, difference between AI, Lothian, and Pentland. Uh, go ahead and read through it. And as for Dundee, I just took it from the website. So um, just really read the website. This is like the general information that I guess like might be um, important to know. No matter where you live, campus apartment, residence halls, wherever, definitely talk to the people that you are living with as much as possible so that you understand um, their sides of things and you understand your own things and then like if you have any problems that come up like at least you can communicate it better uh walls are thin no matter where you go so like people might be doing weird things or like just watching videos too loud or god knows what else they're doing um just keep in mind noise is quite loud especially like if you're living like on a lower floor the the floor above you like you'll often hear like if they're like walking loudly or like, um, I know in Pentland you could often hear like the like desk drawers like opening and closing and like the closet doors like slamming and like the doors too. Um, there's really not much hall or building bonding in the campus apartments as far as I know. It's pretty like separate and like everyone's doing their own thing. Like I know in Glenmore like besides like our um, the residence events like I don't go to those but um, there's really not much for like bonding besides those unless you like actually like or someone decides to like um, talk to each individual apartment. I've never seen that happen. But with the apartments as well, you can definitely stay during winter and spring breaks, which is a plus, especially if you live far away and can't easily like you aren't um, able to go home as easily. Um, also keep in mind that all campus apartments have summer housing rent free, except for Glenmore's academic year contracts, which I believe is um, buildings E, F, and G. Yeah. Um, the other campus apartments, so like everything besides Glenmore, they're more on the streets, like around UCR, um, on your Canyon Crest Drive. So they're more like accessible to the public and oftentimes you do get like crime reports from UCPD, um, our police department here on campus. You'll hear things like, oh, like someone broke into this place or like someone was walking by. Like you'll hear weird things like that. Um, no matter where you go, just definitely be careful. There's definitely um, safety resources, like especially like when you're living in those campus apartments, call UCPD. So Glenmore is definite because it's like more directly on campus, like being close to the other residence halls, um, I would say they're safer because there's more people around you and that are especially like closer to you. Um, you don't need to drive to campus, which is definitely a bonus unless you want to, I don't know. So you don't have to worry about parking or traffic either. Um, food is always nearby and especially because you have a meal plan um, of some sort. I would suggest getting the smaller one if you want to save money so and like cook on your own but if you don't have the resources to be able to get food i would say i guess just go for the um 150 meal plan um as for laundry it's i feel like it's the cheapest here because it's the same as excuse me the residence halls at least that's what i've noticed um and there's a bike storage if you want to bring your bike. There's different conference rooms for like residential events. And like, if you want to study there, like when they're not holding some meeting or something, then you can study there too. Um, there's also a computer lab with a printing quota like in the residence halls. And Scotty's and the Glenmore Market is very accessible. Um, and there's also a game room that functions as a computer lab, but it doesn't have printers and as well as the pool table and Amazon lockers. What's nice is that you get your own room, but obviously like you're sharing an apartment with at least one person. So like there's the two bed and the four bed, but mostly the two bed ones. Um, new Glenmore looks nice in my opinion. And like Glenmore in general looks nicer than the other apartments, but really it just depends on like your personal preference. And especially like with new Glenmore, um, 
I'm currently in it and you can tell you can kind of tell but um, I'm in my kitchen and it's a much bigger kitchen than in um, Old Glenmore. So Old Glenmore is basically um, the buildings next to um, the Scotties in Glenmore. So buildings A, B, C, D, and E. As for New Glenmore, it's F, G, I, L, and M. So year-round contracts are only for the rest of the buildings except for um, E, F, and G. And the thing is, you don't get to choose which building where you live, like as in um, Old versus New Glenmore, but you do you do get to decide like which contract you want with so whether it's like a year round so that's including summer so summer rent free or just that academic year because you won't be here over summer so again with uh glenmore the uh, apartments are furnished and include like in your review in your living room they include like sofa couch low table um a big lamp and small lamp and like a counter or a small table for your lamp as well as a large cabinet so like if you want to put your tv or like some sort of screen over there or i guess you can use it as seating area sometimes like if you want extra seating area it just really depends on you and like how you want to use your things everything is multi-purpose so um the kitchen as well of course it comes with a dining table and chairs and the microwave behind me as well as the stove oven electric stove oven um, the sink does have garbage disposal. There's a dishwasher as well, and like your standard freezer, your standard refrigerator, and a bunch of cabinets and pantry space, which I enjoy in in, in Glenmore, especially New Glenmore, as well as um, a large like kitchen trash can. And for your bathroom, it's like a shower head, and bath too so I guess you can take a bath wouldn't suggest it but I mean like if you clean it then you should be fine um and there's the bath ledge of course to like put shower supplies if you want and it does come with a shower curtain so that's great and the toilet but um do keep in mind that I believe as of like this past year they stopped um having the um people that come and clean come in here so like there's no more like cleaning done for you, you have to clean on your own so definitely bring your own cleaning supplies for like cleaning the shower and the toilet more than anything um i would highly suggest getting a vacuum too especially because um apparently they took away the vacuum this year i don't even know why but they did um and bring like cooking and baking supplies if you're interested it just depends on like whether you do any of those things or not um I would say bring food and snacks so that you can just have them whenever. Um, of course, like I said earlier, definitely bring cleaning supplies of some sort, um, especially like um, paper towels and napkins and things like that. Um, I would suggest getting a water filter. I guess the same applies in the residence halls as well, but um, they do have what they call like hydration stations on campus where you can get water for basically free. They say it's filtered, but I don't know. I guess it depends on you whether you like the taste of the water or not. Um, also bring trash bags for your large trash can. And if you want a Keurig so that you can like make coffee or tea or just have hot water, that's also good. Um, toaster, I guess, if you want to, if you want bread. And if you want to decorate, so definitely bring some like decor and whatnot. Um, like I said earlier, Old versus New Glenmore. So Old Glenmore has like a smaller bathroom sink counter, but it does come with sink cabinets compared to New Glenmore. Um, has a larger like sink space, but no cabinets. It's just like all empty on the bottom. So like you can have like different like drawers under there if you want, or like just use it as storage. Um, the kitchen is definitely bigger in New Glenmore compared to Old Glenmore. And as for the rooms, um, New Glenmore has like a small wardrobe and it doesn't come with a desk shelf or lamp, unlike Old Glenmore, which has like an actual like big closet and uh, as well as a desk shelf, desk shelf and lamp like in like um, the residence halls. So as for the other campus apartments, most of them are along Canyon Crest Drive, except for Plaza and Oven, which are kind of at like the intersection of Canyon Crest and Linden Street. Um, Bannockburn is the closest and has asbestos, which 
you can look up on your own. There's like a safety contract that you have to safety waivers, safety contract that you have to sign before you live there. Um, and then like open family housing, the plaza, um, Falkirk, Stonehaven, and then IV, which is behind the um, university extension, which is often for international students, which is why it's, I guess, located there. And it's across from the university village. So Stonehaven and Ivy are the most expensive. And like, since I've gone there in person, I saw that the laundry is like $3, which is expensive. Um, and more than anything, everyone has a different experience in these campus apartments. You can go ahead and look on Reddit to see what people have said. Um, I've heard from friends that live there. Um, some people, I have a friend in Stonehaven, she likes it. Um, her friends in Falkirk like it, but she's also heard like some other people like um, have bug problems and like rodent problems, depending on where you live. It just depends on you. And the same thing with like crimes happening. Um, it's just not the best to be living over there, in my opinion, because it's like so accessible to like the public compared, like even if it's, it might be like a gated community, like um, Stonehaven and Plaza, I still worry, but it depends on you and how much you want to spend and how much you're willing to risk. Um, from what I've noticed, International Village IV is the only one that looks more like a hotel. So like everything's mostly like inside and there's only like few buildings versus like separate buildings for the other apartments. And um, you, what's nice is that UCPD is quite close to them. So um, especially in front of Oban, which is the family housing. So if you like in any emergency whatsoever, as long as it's not like life threatening, then you should be fine with calling UCPD because they're close by and they'll get to you much faster. So for living off campus, the sooner you look for it and research your options, the better. Um, because often, minus the COVID situation, in like a normal situation, most of the um, contracts open up during the springtime because that's when people are leaving, especially like graduating students or like people that want to move out, they're leaving in the spring. So that's when a lot of contracts like open up around then. Um, also keep in mind like splitting your uh, room or like your house, apartment, whatever, with more people will help make it cheaper for you. But also keep in mind that the closer you live to campus, the more expensive it is usually. The most popular choices that I've noticed are um, University Village Towers, Highlander at North Campus, and Grandmark. So you can look at each individual website, which I've like linked into the Google Slides. Um, you can see what's included and contact each one from there. I lived in Highlander at North Campus over summer when I was doing summer sessions last summer and um, Grandmark for a few days when I was staying with a friend for an orientation. Both of them do have like, you have your own private room with like a bathroom inside your room, which is quite convenient. Um, North Campus is, at least for mine, the room, the apartment that I was in was bigger. So like bigger room, bigger closet, definitely bigger living space and like kitchen and the dining room and the balcony was much bigger as well. I felt like over there, like specifically my apartment was really nice. And it was especially convenient to have like your washing machine and dryer in like your own apartment. And this goes for both places too. Um, there was like a mix of like carpet, usually carp from what I've noticed, carpet usually um, is in the, in your own bedroom and then the kitchen and like living room area, they have um, wood floors of some kind. Uh, both have gated communities, but for me, like when I was living over summer, North Campus's gate was broken half the time, and um, both gates stay open for at least a good two minutes. So, like, often, like, people can, like, go through easily, which is interesting and really, honestly, not that safe. Um, What's also good about both of them is that there's a bus route nearby, like directly in front of it or like on the side of it. So 
Um, it, depending on like the time, of course, it can take you directly to campus, some sort of area of campus. And also, um, the University Village Towers does have their own um, bus shuttle, which is free for their residents, which is a good thing to have, especially when you don't have a car. As for housing application and selection, um, obviously, the earlier you submit your application, the earlier you know what you'll be getting or like get to choose. And definitely keep in mind that you can submit your application before you find a roommate. And roommates are important, but not as important as submitting your application first. So get that done. Um, incoming first years. So as for y'all, um, I, I look through my emails to like see the times and on a normal basis, um, you'll be, uh, you'll get some sort of notification at the end of June to um, find out that roommate selection is open and then about two weeks later in like mid-July um, to and at that time they'll notify you when your um, housing selection time slot is. Just keep in mind that um, your time slot might be during orientation so it might be hard to be able to actually like select your housing during orientation depending on like what session you're in and like how much free time you have and like how often you're on your phone so that might be difficult but at the same time with COVID happening you're all at home I'm sure you can just do it while doing orientation just multitask you know um, as for campus apartments the application is available in early February um, they'll give out like apartment offers and like call you about it in late March so like the last week of winter quarter and you should get an offer between then and June at the latest. If you don't then I would say email them or call them but more than anything like had this been like a normal situation call them. I don't know if they're still available for calling but either way it doesn't hurt to check. Um, as for roommate selection you can you can make a roommate group of two to three people including yourself but only one of you need to make the group and whoever makes the group is a group leader but of course that isn't really important um but what is important is that whoever submitted their housing application first is the one choosing where you live so the earlier days the earlier that person submitted their application the earlier their time slot will be and they'll get to decide for all of you um even though like that person will be choosing your housing they won't be choosing your dining plan obviously because that is up to like at your own discretion so you choose your own dining plan um again choose the smallest plan if possible um just depends on you how much you want to eat but college students often like go out a lot or like don't eat as much because of like time or like just being not being hungry or whatever things like that um just get the smallest plan that is recommended for the first years but um as for like continuing students in glenmore or like i guess now including the other residence halls as well um just choose whatever plan works best for you but i'd say choose the smallest one to save money because you probably won't be eating that much most people won't anyways um as for the dining plan options of course i just like Put the chart here. Um, as you can see, the Highlander 50 is the smallest for the residence halls, and the Glenmore Market Plan is the smallest for Glenmore. Um, you can read all about it right here, and I've also included the R Blocks plan for commuters if you are a commuter and would like some kind of meal plan on campus. So these are all the dining locations. Um, go ahead and read through all the different um, links and everything. If you do want this, if you do want early access to these slides, um, please fill out the form which I will be attaching in my YouTube link. That way you can be able to click on these easily or if you want you can go ahead and just like Google them online. So getting you to UCR, especially like for you commuters, um, Please, please, please read the um, FAQs that Transportation Services provides. Um, 
there's a lot of things that you do want to look out for. Um, they, they have a ton of resources, so like how long your commute will be, and they'll tell you like the real time traffic and um, when the RTA bus will arrive. Um, there's also like different regulations for like bikes and like how to register them. So if you do want a bike, you have to register for it or you have to register it in, there in the campus system or something. So do um, look out for that. Uh, the RTA bus is free with your student ID, which is definitely a bonus. It'll take you like all around campus and throughout, um, like all around like the outside of campus and throughout um, Riverside as well, which is amazing if you don't have a car. And there's other options as well for driving. So like carpooling and van pooling and um, I, there's like a drop off car or something, not too sure how it works, but there's also like um, electric vehicle charging stations if you do have like an electric car of some sort. Um, I've also included like the map of where these um, stations are. As for parking permits, again, like I'm not really familiar because I don't have a car and I don't drive, don't have a parking permit, um, but I do know that they are expensive and because there's not enough parking lots, not enough space either, um, you do have to come early in the morning in order to get parking. And there's different rates for um, undergrads versus graduate students. And um, I've also provided the um, parking permit map so that you can see which um, permits apply to which lots. And I did not notice and know this until last year, but apparently like if your car like suddenly dies, um, transportation services, AKA TAPS, um, they do have things that they can help you out with, which is fantastic. So um, I've listed them here on the slide. You can read it uh, if you have any um, things you're specifically looking for, I would say check out their website. And also if you do have a disability, um, there are parking lots specifically for you. So uh, here I've just listed like a bunch of like websites. Some of them are like um, relisted, but they're there um, just for like housing, dining, and transportation in general. There's also the zip car, which is nice. So like you can like it's kind of like renting a car, which is great. You can use it whenever and like for however long and you only have to pay for that much. And supposedly it will save you money, um, which is great. And there's also the point to point shuttle bus, which I did not know about. Had I known about that, I wouldn't have been walking late at night um, in summer, during summer sessions last year. But the point to point shuttle bus is a free shuttle bus thanks to um, UCPD. So like I believe one of the pol student police officers or like the volunteers um, will be driving that shuttle bus. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully um, I'll get the edits done. And yeah. Bye.